1968, a year ripped apart by division, by assassinations, and by war. The world felt like it was coming undone, but high above it all, a silent war was being waged, and the stakes were higher than anyone could imagine. The space race, the United States was losing, the Soviet Union was ahead, and President Kennedy's audacious promise to put a man on the moon by the end of the decade was slipping away. This is the story of Apollo 8, the mission that wasn't supposed to happen, and a voyage of unprecedented risk. To get to the moon, you needed a rocket. And not just any rocket, you needed the Saturn V. Standing 363 feet tall and weighing over 6 million pounds, it was a beast of a machine. But for all its power, it was an unknown quantity. It had only flown twice before, and both times without a crew. The second test flight, Apollo 6, was a near disaster. The rocket shook violently, a phenomenon engineers called Pogo. Two of its engines failed, and the third stage refused to restart in orbit. The fix was found, but the mission that followed, Apollo 8, was originally just an Earth orbit lunar module test. But the lunar module wasn't ready. Facing a looming deadline and a determined Soviet rival, NASA made a call that was either genius or madness. They would scrap the original plan and send Apollo 8 to the moon. The decision was made just two to three months in advance. crew, Commander Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Landers had less training time than usual. They would fly to the moon without a landing craft, in a mission that was essentially a one-way ticket if the service propulsion system engine failed to fire and get them back home. A very real risk. It was a gamble of epic proportions. December 21st, 1968, the world held its breath. The crew, strapped into the Apollo spacecraft, felt the unimaginable power of five F-1 engines firing beneath them. The Saturn V performed well during this crewed flight, despite past issues. Two and a half hours later, they had a decision to make. The final burn of the Saturn V's third stage would either send them into a high Earth orbit or on a trajectory to the moon. It was the point of no return. Lovell radioed, all systems are go. And with a final, powerful thrust, they became the first humans to leave Earth's gravitational sphere of influence. For the first time, our entire planet was visible out a spacecraft window, but it was just a tiny, fading sphere. Then came the physical cost. On the second day of the flight, Borman became sick with vomiting and diarrhea. It was the first clear case of space sickness in an American astronaut. In the cramped confines of the capsule, it was a deeply uncomfortable and alarming ordeal.
As they approached the moon, another crucial moment arrived. To enter lunar orbit, they had to perform a maneuver on the far side of the moon, the side we never see. For about 36 minutes, they would be completely cut off from Earth, from any communication with mission control. A single critical burn had to be executed perfectly, or they would either miss the moon entirely and be lost in space, or hit it head on. There was no room for error. Lovell's voice, calm and steady, was the first to return to the world. Houston, Apollo 8, you're looking good. The burn was successful. The relief was palpable. For the next 20 hours, they orbited the moon 10 times. They were the first humans to see the moon's far side. It was a desolate landscape of countless craters, a stark, gray, silent world. It was an incredible sight, but it was nothing compared to what happened next. On their fourth orbit, as they came around the far side, Bill Anders looked out his window, and there it was a vibrant, colorful marble of blue and white rising over the lunar horizon. It was our home, seen for the first time from this perspective. It was the most profound view of all. The crew frantically snapped photos, and one, in particular, would change the way humanity saw itself. The picture of Earthrise, Later that night, on Christmas Eve, with the world watching, the crew delivered a message. From the edge of the unknown, in a year of darkness they read from the book of Genesis. It was a moment of profound beauty and hope, a simple reminder of our shared home and our common purpose. But the mission wasn't over. They had to get home. Just as they had arrived, they had to leave, with another burn performed on the far side of the moon, again out of contact with Earth. This time, it was the trans-Earth injection burn, and it was just as critical as the last one. Lovell once again was the first to speak. His playful message, please be informed, there is a Santa Claus. It was a signal that they had made it. They were on their way back to Earth. The final danger was re-entry. They would hit the atmosphere at over 24,000 miles per hour, a speed faster than any human had ever traveled. The heat shield would glow at around 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. But just as every other gamble on this mission had paid off, so too did this one. On December 27, 1968, they splashed down in the Pacific Ocean, safe.
Apollo 8 was a triumph. It demonstrated that humans could travel to another celestial body and return safely. It paved the way for Apollo 11 and the first lunar landing. But its greatest legacy might be the one nobody saw coming, the iconic photo of Earthrise, taken from a world without life, reminded us that our planet is a single, fragile oasis in the vastness of space. It was a mission of calculated risks and incredible courage. It was a journey that showed us the true meaning of home.